night guys let me tell you about the mood I'm in now I was one minute one minute from finishing part two of inside the mind of a planet eater probably the most important one stretch of book I wanted to talk about one minute from the end the uh, camera shut off since I'm not going to start it all over again and risk having it again, I'm going to tack on the last goddamn one minute of part two and plow on in to the conclusion of chapter 25 of Peruvian Plunge uh, Inside the Mind of a Planet Eater. Uh, so if you miss parts one and two, go back and listen to them. Anyway, for the last paragraph, <clears throat> as Moose was always mining me for information about the enigmatic Joaquin Rivers, I slipped up in a weak moment and repeated the Manu Airport rumor. Needless to say, this was a great source of humor to him. I made sure he understood that this story was a completely unsubstantiated rumor. Now don't go running your mouth to Joaquin Rivers. That Samuel says you're an airport developer, I chided him. He just smiled back at me and said, You know what they say, Samuel. Loose lips sink ships. I'm not sure whose lips the loosest set of lips I've ever encountered was referring to, his or mine, but I can assure Moose I will never forget that wise piece of advice, nor will I ever forget the sweetest words I have ever heard or will ever hear again from the loose lips of a planet eater. We're in this together, Samuel, and don't you ever remember that. And that was supposed to be the last paragraph of uh, part two, but I guess it's just going to be the first paragraph of part three of chapter 25. Okay, to finish out. <clears throat> Perhaps in an effort to teach me about fairness and balance in journalism, the guy was just sure I had some sort of agenda. He just couldn't figure out what it was. Moose gifted me with a copy of Hunt Oil Company's official magazine called Pay Sand. Pay Sand is a sandstone that contains gas or oil. I joke that perhaps I had a job waiting for me as the editor of the PR pulp organ when I returned to Texas. Here are just a few of the highlights from the official mouthpiece of Hunt Oil Company itself that may offer you a more objective and balanced view of what Hunt Oil is up to down here in Peru just in case you think my jauntest view of their activities has been a wee bit less than balanced. Okay, so we're going to look through a few articles from Paysand. From the masthead just to the left of the photo company president, Ray Hunt, quote, The mission of Hunt Oil Company is to be a growth-oriented leader, I bet, respected throughout the world for the quality and competency of our people, the efficiency and scope of our operations, and our rich heritage of honesty and integrity. Our core values are commitment to excellence, honesty, integrity, respect for the individual, teamwork, and no, no doubt the, uh, <laughs> their greatest core value, creativity. Uh -huh. Can't argue with that one, judging by the rest of that paragraph. Okay, from the article titled, Pipeline Installation Requires Coordinated Effort. 
Hunt Oil Pipeline crews used five D9 Caterpillar tractors to anchor a kilometer long string of 34 inch feed gas pipeline as it was installed on a steep slope at pipeline kilometer 222 in the Andean Highlands. Uh, Highlands. Each tractor weighed 49 tons. The dozer facing the train is the last resort tractor. Don't you love that term, last resort tractor? Should any piece start to slip, the operator buries the bulldozer blade and ripper claw. Because of the rocks, the pipeline trench is lined with sandbags to prevent damage to the pipeline's anti-corrosion coating. From the article titled, Peru Liquid National Gas Project, Camasilla Advances. <clears throat> the Peru LNG plant, the Peru LNG plant site, just so you know, right next door to the most important and biologically rich wildlife breeding ground on the entire Pacific coast. They left that part out. A construction project is 75% complete. That was in June 2009. In December of 2008, 19 heavy plant vessels were delivered at the port of San Martin in Pisco. The vessels were built in Korea and Malaysia. I can't believe it. They weren't built in China. The heaviest vessel was the AGR absorber, which is more than 33 meters or 100 feet long, six and a half meters, about 20 feet wide, seven meters high, and weighs 402 tons. Special multi-wheel hydraulic trailers were used to transport the heavy vessels to the project site. The 105 kilometer, about 65 mile trip, took seven days. And I thought Peruvian buses were slow. To maintain safety and minimize traffic disruptions, project contractor CBNI and the Peru LNG team worked closely with Peruvian officials and local communities to plan the convoys. From the article, World to Explore, article on South America, quote, Peru Block 76, which was the least, you know, covering Amaracari, <clears throat> the first Hunt Oil Company operated exploration block is on trend with, meaning is in a straight line from Camasea, the license covering 14,351 square kilometers, otherwise known as three and a half million acres of rainforest, was signed May 20, May 2nd, 2006. Respal, a, which is a Spanish oil company that Hunt sold half its drilling rights to in order to split the risk of the investment. Respal has a 50% share in the block. It is located in a national preserve and to safeguard the pristine jungle and its native inhabitants, Carlos de Solar, general manager of Peru Hunt Oil Company, and his Lima staff developed a rigorous environmental master plan 
you know, overseen and paid for by Hunt Oil Company in classic fox guarding the hen house fashion. Back to the article, which Peru approved in 2008. Surprise, surprise, back to the article. Work on the environmental and social impact assessment necessary to acquire 400 kilometers, otherwise known as 248 miles, now standing at 297 miles of seismic testing was led by Silva Lay, environmental health and safety representative. The assignment entailed a number of meetings with local communities and, according to two native rights organizations involved in the process, resulted in every single community being opposed to Hunt's plans, a small detail conveniently omitted from the article. Finally, from the article, Hunt Oil Company earns silver LEED certification. Hunt Oil Company's Dallas headquarters building has earned the U.S. Green Building Council's leadership in energy and environmental design, the LEED silver certification for commercial interiors. Hunt Oil is the only independent oil and gas company in Dallas to achieve LEED silver certification for commercial interiors. To do this, Hunt met stringent credit qualifications in the areas of sustainable sites, water efficiency, energy and atmosphere, materials and resources, indoor environmental quality, and innovation in design. Hooray, Hunt! Those greenies. And we're going to close out Chapter 25, Inside the Mind of a Planet Eater, with an open letter from Hambone Little Tail to Moose Mulligan and any other Planet Eater out there who might just happen to be reading this little missive from Hambone Little Tail, environmental alarmist, doomsday prophet, and chronicler of the downfall of Western civilization. Dear Moose Mulligan, I have no way of knowing when or if these words I am tossing out into the universe will ever reach your eyes or ears, but toss them out I will, just the same in the vain hope that one or two of them may rub off on you, or at least on someone who shares some of your worldview. I realize, too, on the slim chance that Peruvian plunge ever does land in your hands, that I have plummeted <clears throat> on your sleaze meter to somewhere between Barack Obama and Edward Abbey. Not only have I betrayed you and stabbed you in the back like Brutus did to Caesar, but I have thrown even more fuel on the flames of your hate-filled rhetoric that us tree-huggers, especially us tree-hugging journalists with the secret lefty agendas, are the lowest form of bottom-feeding scavengers barely even worth the energy of your scathing contempt. I harbor no illusions that anything I could say to you at this point would any more make you see the light that anything you ever said to me in a week of ranting can make me move back toward the darkness that you inhabit and from which I am trying to escape. Therefore, this letter isn't so much of an apology or even an excuse for what you no doubt perceive as my inexcusable, low-down, dirty dog behavior. 
It is instead my attempt at an explanation of my behavior. More importantly, it is an amplification and clarification of my hidden agenda that has you so mystified. Perhaps, just maybe, after you finish reading it, you will have a better understanding of what lurks in the awakening minds of today's tree huggers. That is, after all, the least I owe you, after all you've done for me to explain what lurks inside the mind of a planet eater. First off, let's dispose with the lie I told you five minutes after I met you, the one about me not having, having any opinion on hunt oil. Moose, you know why I had to make that off-the-cuff decision. You're a lot of things, but stupid ain't one of them. If I had answered that question honestly, we would have verbally tangled like a couple of rutting bull elk for about five minutes, and I would have lost a golden opportunity to, to discover what makes guys like you tick. That opportunity was simply too valuable to waste, and right or wrong, I took the plunge and stuck with it. Try imagining a prairie dog looking you square in the eye and asking you point blank, so, Moose, that gun isn't really loaded, is it? And you'll have some kind of idea what I was dealing with. If you're really that interested in my opinion of hunt oil and of all the planet eaters in the world they speak for, I invite you to read the rest of this book and hopefully you will learn something along the way. This letter is not the venue to address those opinions, however. What I would like to address here are a few of the rhetorical questions you have about tree huggers and journalists in general and about this one tree hugging journalist in particular. To answer your first rhetorical question, just who are these tree huggers? Well, let me remind you that you just spent a week hanging out with and getting to know perhaps the single most militantly pacifist, hardcore dirt worshiping, worshiping, dirt worshiping tree hugger I know this side of the left side of Edward Abbey. As perhaps you recall, he is a 49-year-old, college-educated, former realtor with real estate licenses in three states, a Roth IRA burning a hole in his pocket to invest in more real estate, a 1031 exchange tax-deferred rental property, $30,000 in silver buried in Texas, or so I thought at that time, and two Bank of America credit cards. And as much as it pains you to admit, he's a pretty nice regular guy who can run around with the boys at a keg party in the woods and blend right in. What might not be so apparent to you about the guy is that he is an awakening soul who is figuring out slowly or rediscovering that the unsustainable lifestyle he has been leading for way too long is pushing this planet toward Armageddon every day. And to keep that from happening, he is trying to get people to realize, as he has, that it is past time to dump the old broken down Big Oil, Big Mac paradigm that is hurtling this planet against a brick wall at 23,000 miles per hour. Now, I can only speak for myself, but just a few other folks I know who would probably proudly describe themselves as tree huggers include other real estate agents and investors I know, mortgage brokers, builders, venture capitalists, lawyers, accountants, entrepreneurs, well, you get my point, and let's not forget those pesky journalists and ecologue owners you love to hate 
so much. Moving on to your rhetoric, your rhetoric about all those damn tree huggers like Barack Obama who wants to move this society back to the Stone Age, I couldn't help but smile recalling my buddy in Guatemala, a tree-hugging eco-lodge owner, remarking to me in February that he was, quote, just waiting around for the planet eaters to bomb us back into the Stone Age. Of course, you, meaning me, understand that's an optimistic hope. Moose, I just want to make it clear to you and anyone else reading this that this self-proclaimed environmental alarmist doomsday prophet and chronicler of the downfall of Western civilization does not want and has never wanted to live in the Stone Age, though you could never tell it by tell it by looking at my life today, I am a huge fan of hot showers, macho pickup trucks, central heat and air, big juicy cheeseburgers, cell phones, and my former Walmart credit card. It's simply that I have fucking woken up and figured out that if even one half of the population of this overcrowded little rock hurtling through space suddenly demanded to have these items that Americans take for granted as necessities instead of the luxuries they are, which is exactly what those folks understandably are demanding from Shintuya, Peru to Beijing, China, then this entire house of cards would collapse overnight and the Stone Age would look pretty damn nice compared to the New Age we're barreling toward as a society and as a species with the fucking oil companies and beef industry leading the lemming charge into oblivion. I'm having the hardest time trying to make my self-described tree-hugging friends from the last paragraph understand this simple, straightforward e equation, and I sure as hell don't expect you to be able to add up two and two between all your fancy seismic exploration geophysics equations, so I'm simply trying to offer you a peek into the mushroom-cleared mind of a real tree hugger. Moving on to your oft-repeated rhetorical whine, don't these damn tree huggers have anything better to do with their lives than pick on the poor planet eaters? All I can say, speaking for myself, is this. No moose, as a matter of fact, I have nothing better to do with my life than to pick on planet eaters, which is exactly why I have carved this huge swath of spare time out of my once busy life to do just that. Picking on planet eaters and exposing their evil schemes to anyone I can find willing to listen to the chilling facts is, indeed, the single highest and best use of my time and my life I can think of. And there's no more perfect bunch of planet eaters I can think of in, more po in any more poetically positioned place I can imagine that Hunt Oil Company in Salvation, Peru, in the very heart of the Mother of God, to do just that. And I would like to thank you for your valuable contribution in helping me to help everyone else on this planet wake up to the madness of what is going on in the Peruvian Amazon. It's guys like you that make it a lot easier for guys like me to do my job, which leads me to my by now self-evident agenda that you never could figure out behind my tequila-breathed regular Joe good old boy exterior I presented to the world, I present to the world most of the time. If you want a detailed description of uh, my admittedly less than objective agenda, I'll refer you to the long-winded preface to this rambling rant. 
but I'll sum it up for you and anyone else who may have forgotten it right here. First off, first off, my agenda is to balance out the mountains of Madison Avenue funded, funded unadulterated crap out there in the media and the internet from folks like your fair and balanced friends at Fox News. Much more important than that side job, however, is this one. I am doing whatever I can do in my tiny little hambone way to follow a direct order from spirit to help wake up this comatose planet and to foment a planet-wide revolution in consciousness to change our self-destructive sinning ways that I honestly believe on a cellular level are going to be the ruination of us all, tree hugger and planet eater alike. If our budding friendship, which I really did value, is a casualty of the revolution, then so be it. I loved your comment cautioning me about loose lips sinking ships. Before we part company forever, I just want you to know that the first ship that this pair of loose lips has its torpedo crosshair set upon is none other than the battleship USS Hunt Oil. My lips will be wagging in the wind as long as it takes to sink that ship or minimally to float its ass out of the Peruvian Amazon and back to Iraq or wherever it came from. And I will forever be grateful to your loose lips for helping me sink that ship. I look forward to the day when I can look back over this whole mad cap adventure we had together and be able to bugle moose-like. Thank God for Moose Mulligan. He saved the mother of God. All joking aside, amigo, and I really do consider you my amigo, even though we've let the mother of God flow between us, if you ever do wake up and see the light, and if I can do it, so can you, dude. We sure could use a man of your caliber on our team, but until then, <clears throat> amigo, and please don't take this personally, just remember one thing, you and I are not in this together, and don't you ever forget it. Hasta luego, Moose, your old trail pal, Hambone. And that winds up the long-winded chapter 25, and we head in to chapters 26, Mother of God Boomerang, as Peruvian Plunge starts to wind down.